A lot of you may not have had a chance to take a fall foliage tour this year. So here on Oklahoma Gardening, we've put together a small tour of trees to show you that have great fall color or fall berries that have interest, and also feature a few things that may work out well in your landscape. One of the first plants that you may not think of as having fall color is the southern magnolia. Long about late July, early August, the berries begin to ripen inside the cones, and the berries themselves have bright red scarlet color, which is attractive and also provides some food for wildlife. The only problem with magnolia, of course, is if you're going to plant that, it needs to have a protected site out of strong, drying winds, and also you need to allow plenty of space for it. A small front yard is not the place for southern magnolia because it will soon hide your house. Now hackberry has beautiful yellow foliage. And although we don't often think of the hackberry tree as being anything spectacular, it is a very tough tree, very durable, and provides nice shade. It is a member of the elm family, but is not prone to Dutch elm disease like the old American elm that we're used to. It also has some berries that are rather unnoticeable but provide wildlife cover. The hackberry also is very wind resistant, which is important for a lot of you out in more exposed areas of northwestern Oklahoma. The next tree is one of my favorites. It's the Chinese pistache. And this tree may not be very familiar to you. It has foliage that almost looks like a sugar maple from a distance. It's a brilliant, bright, reddish orange. And although it may have some variability in the nursery trade because the Chinese pistache is usually trans is, uh, propagated from seeds. So if you're going to pick out a Chinese pistache to plant in your yard, a good time to select it from a nursery is in the fall when you can be sure of the color that you're getting because it ranges from yellow all the way to bright, bright reddish orange. But if you can get that red orange color, it's just ideal. Another great thing about the Chinese pistache is that it's ideal in all areas of Oklahoma. It's a very tough, very deep-rooted tree, takes high heat and drying winds. So if you live in Gaiman, this is one that you might want to think about planting. It's a low umbrella-shaped tree, and it'll take it many, many years to get real large. It's not extremely fast growing, but with care, you can get a good-sized tree in not too much time. The next tree, it doesn't really have spectacular foliage, but it has translucent yellow-orange berries in the fall that occur in clusters all over the tree, and that's the western soapberry. Now, this tree is good to plant on disturbed sites. So if you live in a new housing development where the soil has been run over with bulldozers and compacted heavily, you might try the western soapberry because it transplants very well. It grows to a small to medium-sized tree and makes a good cover for wildlife and provides some food for them. Be cautious though with the western soapberry. Don't plant it near a flower bed because the seeds germinate very easily and you'll be picking out baby soapberry trees every spring. So plant it in a yard where you're going to mow over the seedlings so they don't become a nuisance. This next plant you may not even think of as a landscape plant, but if you're familiar with poke salad, you know what it is. This is pokeweed. And some of you may, in years gone by, have eaten this, the uh, young shoots in the springtime with asparagus tips. Makes a tasty meal, although later in the season, it's not palatable at all. But the pokeweed does have nice purple berries. They're very colorful in the fall. Be careful with this plant, though, that you don't let it take over in the yard or in the garden, because it can spread and become kind of a nuisance. Now, the sweet gum tree is a fast growing, outstanding fall color landscape tree. But this is one you want to be a little bit careful with. It likes low, moist, creek bottom type areas. Incidentally, there are many cultivars that you can choose from that have very reliable fall color because they've been taken from cuttings. You can get everything from a blaze orange to a burgundy color. So ask your nurseryman for a certain variety of sweet gum depending on the color choice that you want. Bear in mind, though, that the sweet gum fruits are very messy. The balls drop in anywhere from late summer all the way through winter, depending on the tree. And they can litter the driveway and are very painful to walk on if you happen to be barefoot. 
Now the pin oak is a tree that a lot of you are familiar with. It has showy reddish orange fall color. And although it survives a wide range of conditions, it must have an acid soil to grow well. Many pin oaks that I've seen have a yellow color during the year because they're growing on a soil that has too high a pH or an alkaline soil. If you have this condition, your pin oak generally is yellow no matter what you do to it. And you'll find that if you'll add sulfur to the soil and lower the pH, then that will release some nutrients like iron and manganese that the tree needs, and it will green up. Although, if you have a soil that has a high pH and you don't want to have to baby the tree that much, for similar color, you might try a Schumard or a Northern Red Oak as an alternative. They're a little bit better choice. Now this next tree has burgundy foliage in the fall and the leaves are ping pong paddle shape. This is the smoke tree. And it's very often overlooked as a large shrub or a small tree for the landscape, yet it's very, very tough and in, the, in June and July, the flowers occur on there in clusters, and the small fruits end up giving the tree a smoke-like appearance that's very attractive. Again, in the fall, there are various varieties available that do have this deep burgundy color that you might want to grow in your landscape. The juniper, of course, grows all over Oklahoma, and the blueberries are attractive in the wintertime. It provides good wildlife cover, it serves as an excellent windbreak around your home, and there are various colors and forms available, all the way from deep, dark blue-green, all the way to a gray-green or silvery gray. So you might want to think about planting this in your landscape as well. Scarlet oak is a tree that probably is best grown in eastern Oklahoma. It has bright red foliage. It's a somewhat slow grower, but again, outstanding fall color. This next tree is another one of my favorites that's greatly underused in Oklahoma. It's the lace bark elm. It has fascinating bark that peels off in small pebble-like chunks that give it the name lace bark. Very attractive, very interesting tree, and it's tough. Unlike the American elm and the Siberian elm, the lace bark elm has no pests. Dutch elm disease is not a problem, or the elm leaf beetle, neither of these insect or diseases bother the tree. The leaves are rather small and the one thing that separates this from the other elms is that it flowers and fruits in the fall. The leaves sometimes have a nice orange to, to pinkish fall color. But the best thing about it is that interesting bark. It'll give you some interest in your garden in the winter time. Now hawthorn does have beautiful nice red fruit but this tree can be a problem in areas where there are a lot of cedar trees planted because it can get cedar apple rust disease, which affects the fruits and small stems on the tree. Although hawthorn is very, very drought resistant and adaptable, and it does have nice spring flowering on it, I really don't recommend it in an area where there are a lot of cedar trees planted because it can become a problem. Of course, pyracantha or firethorn is a shrub that many of you are familiar with, and the berries on that can range from light orange all the way to orangey red, depending on the variety that you grow. It, of course, needs full sun and a well-drained site. Do watch out, though, for fire blight and lace bug damage on the plant. This next plant is called a burning bush, or winged euonymus. Euonymus alata is the species. It gives spectacular early fall color. The foliage drops rather quickly, though. But for that short time, it gives you just a blaze of red in the, in the lawn area. It's a slow-growing shrub, and depending on the variety, can get anywhere from 3 to 10 feet high, depending on the form that you purchase. The compact form is probably better, because it only gets up to 3, maybe 4 feet high at the most. Very few pest problems. Again, nice fall color. The dogwood, of course, needs protection has nice orange to red leaves in the fall and nice red berries in the winter. Oak leaf hydrangea is a plant that you might try. It's native to the southeast, has very showy, coarse textured foliage that looks like large red oak leaves. It's one that, again, is interesting in the fall. This last plant doesn't have fall color, but it has scent in the fall, which is unusual. It flowers in the fall and smells like hyacinth blooms. This is silverberry, 
or Iliagnus macrophylla. There are no thorns or suckers like other Iliagnus plants, and it has silver gray green foliage. It takes high heat and wet soils. It does require frequent pruning, but of course the best thing about it is that fragrance. We hope you've enjoyed our fall tour, and thank you for joining us here on Oklahoma Gardening. We'll see you next week.